Side of God to celebrate the gift of the Spirit. This was not the original date. This was not the original location. I was not the original pastor. Yet God has been at work from the very beginning. On behalf of Blake and Maria, I want to thank you all for, for being here. I know that getting out in public in groups, it, it takes a choice. And uh, on behalf of them, also uh, appreciate the fact that you are creating a safe environment uh, by wearing masks and, and helping those around you feel safe. And healthy. We are gathered together inside of God. And we recognize that the covenant of marriage was established by God who created us to be in relationship with one another. And that today you two come together to be bound in this holy covenant with his presence and power, Jesus graced the wedding at Cana Galilee, and in his sacrificial love, he gave for us the example of the love of a husband and wife. Blake and Maria come to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant today. Will you join me in prayer? Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit, Blake and Maria, who come now to be joined in marriage. Grant that they may keep their vows to one another in the strength of your steadfast love. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with one another all of their days. And may we, your children, bear witness to your grace and love through their union. Amen. Blake and Maria, I charge you both as you stand in the presence of God to remember that love and loyalty alone will avail as the foundation of a happy home. The solemn vow that you are about to make are kept faithfully. And that steadfastly you endeavor to do the will of your heavenly Father, your life will be filled with joy, and the home that you are establishing will abide in peace. No other ties are more tender, no other vows are more sacred than those that you are about to assume. Blake, when you have this beautiful, radiant woman to be your wife, to live together in holy marriage, will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, being faithful to her as long as you both shall live, and you answer in faith as I do. Maria, will you have this handsome and charming man to be your husband, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsake him, all others, being faithful to him as long as you both shall live? And your answer is faith as I do. Now, Blake and Maria also desire a blessing from their family. So for you who represent their family, if you would give them this blessing, please say, we do. We do. Who presents this woman to be married to this man? Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or base conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who 
being there in it, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human life. This past week, when we were visiting, I shared how excited I was at that passage. passage and part of the reason is I think uh, there is such beauty in this image of the divine Christ, fully God, fully human, pouring out himself fully as a servant. We don't often like to think of our God as one who is a servant. Our God is, is a powerful God. Our God is a mighty God. It is a God who spoke all of the heavens and earth into existence. And yet the passage demonstrates this humility and this deep love that God actually has for his creation. You see, I truly believe that Christian marriage is an incredible vehicle that God is using right now in this moment, in this world, to be a witness to love, peace, and humility. To model the same love that Christ had for the world as a husband and wife is to model the role of a servant. And so as you continue to go about your days, you're going to have great days. You're going to have not so great days. You'll have good days. You'll have not so good days. But how you choose to treat one another in the great and not so great and in the good and the not so good will be evidence of the covenant that you are taking on today. It'll be a witness to those around you. Because we're always in the public eye. And in fact, more so than ever, we find ourselves in the public eye. You don't need to be a uh, Olympic beach volleyball gold medalist to be in the public eye. You could just be your normal, everyday, recreational, over-aggressive beach volleyball player and still be in the public eye. Our culture has created these platforms where we have a voice. And there are a lot of people that are ready to listen to our voice. And then there are a lot of people that are ready to put out an opposing voice. As husband and wife, you have a voice. And Blake, you do have your independent voice. And Maria, you have your independent voice. But now you have your combined voice. The way you live the way you spend your money, the way you treat one another, and the way you treat your neighbors, the way you treat your parents and your siblings, the way you treat the folks you work with, all reflect on your love for one another and your love for God. And so I want to encourage you to incorporate three, what I would call spiritual phrases into your daily vocabulary. Okay? Don't you turn and face one another. And, and I call these spiritual phrases because these are all phrases that God first spoke and used. And so the first phrase is, I love you. Would, would you say that to one another? You see how much more bubbly and exciting? I give more time, like, I love you. See? Yeah. Awesome. Like, today is an easy day to say it with that kind of vigor and excitement. There will be days. When you probably won't be able to say it in real life. But I want you to remember that these are the three words that God has spoken over us from the beginning of time. And every time you say, I love you to another, you are actually reflecting that divine image that you were created in. And every time you choose to esteem you to one another, you are also choosing to be someone who's been created in the image of God. And so my hope and prayer for you is that those three words will be the, the bookends of every day, that they will be the first three words out of your mouth every morning, and they will be the last three words that leave your lips every night. The second 
spiritual phrase uh, I would say is, I am sorry. Can you say that? I am sorry? I am sorry. Now, see, like, you said that with a little more practice, like, you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spiritual phrase because even though from the beginning of time that we have, that we have heard God saying, I love you, we have found ourselves saying and doing things and acting in ways that has not necessarily reflected that love back to God. And then we are put in a position to cry out, I am sorry. And so every time you cry out to one another and say, I am sorry, uh, you are stepping into this spiritual dance of what it means to be loved by God and, and welcomed by God to say, I'm sorry. I hope that you are loose with those words. And I hope that you don't ever find the day when you choose to hold back those words, I'm sorry. Because you will say, act, and think in ways that probably do not reflect the love back to you. The third and final spiritual phrase is, I forgive you. Can you say that? Like Maria, there's never a moment in our lives when we cry out to God and say, I am sorry, where the words coming back to us are not, I forgive you. And so as a husband and wife that reflects the spiritual love, I want to encourage you to love and live like Jesus. Finding yourselves using the words, I forgive you. Using the words, I am sorry. And using the words, I love you. promise you, if you incorporate those three spiritual phrases in your world, in your rhythm, in your daily life, I promise you that you will have a life and a marriage that is filled with joy and peace. And so, are you ready to exchange vows? All right, good. I'll make sure we're going right. Yeah. Sun's going down. We got, we're getting like perfect uh, sun. So first, Blake, if you would repeat after me, I, Blake, take you, Maria, I, Blake, take you, Maria. to be my wedded wife, to, be my wife. to have and to hold, have and to hold. From, this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for, better, for, worse. for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer. In, sickness and in, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish. till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, According to God, according to God's <laughs> holy ordinance, according to God's holy, according to God's holy ordinance, I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. Good job, Maria. <laughs> All right, Maria. I, Maria, take you, Blake. I, Maria, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, I pledge you my faith. Now, Blake and also decided to exchange a gift as a, as a symbol of their unity. And you exchange these rings. These rings are an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, and they signify to us the union between Jesus Christ and his church, as well as signifying to us a union between Blake and Maria. Just as there is no end to circle, may there also never be an end to your love for the Lord or one another. Join me in blessing these rings. Bless the Lord the giving of these rings, that they who wear them may live in your peace and continue in your favor all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Blake, as you place this ring on Maria's finger, you can repeat after me. Maria, I give you this ring as a sign of my love. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maria, as you place this ring on Blake's finger, you repeat after me. 
Blake, I give you this ring as a sign of my love. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit. Will you join me in prayer? Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love and sending Jesus Christ to come among us to be born of a human mother and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of Lake and Maria. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon them on this evening. Defend them from every enemy, lead them into all peace. Let their love for one another be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle upon their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrow. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now that Blake has given themselves to one another by solemn vows and the joining of hands and giving and receiving of rings, I now pronounce it to their husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May those whom God has joined together let no one tear apart. I offer this uh, this benediction. I want to read all the things. may abide in your home. May your home bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those who love the stranger will find in you inner strength. May you experience God's love in a way that transforms you both so that the world we share may also be transformed. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and forever. Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to present to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Blake Carlton.
All right, well, Blake Maria, this has been uh, the incredibly shaky cam. Uh, absolutely paranoid backup recording for your wedding. And uh, Missy and I, and clearly all of these people here, send you all our love and wish you all the best. On this second day of October, 2020, you know, just in case in later years you lose track of your anniversary date, you can come back and check the recording. Yeah. Well, on with a great night. And that's going to be the end of this streaming for now. Okay.